Let's start off with this problem. How many molecules of sulfur tetrafluoride are present in 8.21 grams of the compound? First, let's write the formula for sulfur tetrafluoride. Then let's plan a calculation route to go from grams of the compound to number of molecules. The suggested route is grams, which we start with 8.21, convert that to moles, and that's going to give us a count of molecules. It will not give us the actual number of molecules. It'll begin to get us there. Once we get the moles of the compound, then we'll use Avogadro's number to get the actual number of molecules. So the calculation looks like this. Start off with 8.21 grams, multiply that by the reciprocal of the molar mass of the compound, 1 over 108 grams. Notice the grams cancel out, and you're left with moles of the compound. Now, 0 0.0760 moles should make a lot of sense, because it takes 108 grams of the compound to have a mole. The next step is to convert the moles to the actual number of molecules. To do that, multiply the moles, the number of moles, by Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, and the actual number of molecules in the sample is 4.58 times 10 to the 22nd. I'll continue with this problem. How many grams of sulfur dioxide are present in 3.33 times 10 to the 22nd molecules of the compound? So unlike the previous problem, we're starting off with molecules, and we have to find out how many grams these molecules weigh. First, let's write the formula for sulfur dioxide, and then plan a calculation route to solve this problem. The approach is start with the actual number of molecules, which we're given, then convert that number to moles using Avogadro's number, and then finally convert that then convert that count of molecules in moles to grams using the molar mass of SO2. The calculation looks like this. You start off with 3.33 times 10 to the 22nd molecules. Then we divide that by Avogadro's number to get the number of moles and the number of moles is 0 0.0553, and that number should make sense because we only have 3.33 times 10 to the 22nd molecules. In order to have one mole of anything, we need 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of those items. And finally, we take the 0 0.0553 moles, and multiply that by the molar weight of SO2, which is 64 grams per one mole. And 3.54 grams should make perfect sense, because one mole is equal to 64 grams, and we only have 0 0.0553 moles. So logically, we're going to have much less than 64 grams.